Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 160-something of the Speared Sundays podcast. Very special episode. I'm joined by a guest, stand-up comedian, very good friend of mine, Mr. Doug Chappell. Hey. Welcome. Well, thanks, Lewis. Thanks for having me. No worries. Happy to have you. Um... How did we meet? I've known you. How, we've known each other for years. Yeah, yeah, on the circuit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I feel like I feel like I need one of those booster seats. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I think everybody does, really. Like you know when you get the kids go to their hairdressers, they put one yeah. up so they're up in the seat. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck, well, someone's going to come by and cut our hair in a minute, so uh, <laughs> we might get a booster seat for you. Yeah. Um, yeah. We met at the Comics Lounge. Yeah. Did we? So. Yeah, I think so. On the yeah. circuit. I know definitely on the circuit somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I've uh, known you for since I started stand-up, really, about five or six years almost. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I think my first ever set was at the Comics Lounge. We may have met there mm. or at another point i don't really know <laughs> but uh tell people about yourself who are you uh oh, i'm just i'm just a dude uh yeah and i do stand up loves doing stand up uh got a fight soon coming up yes so uh is that yeah. pretty that's left of field for you uh, a little bit I, 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 I boxed when i was younger so but i haven't done it for a long time how so. much younger uh a long uh, 20 20 plus years so 20 years yeah and if, why why are you getting back into <laughs> fighting after 20 years off? uh well one I, I, a bit of a challenge but also want to raise money and awareness for uh violence against women so yeah I hope to sort of by committing some violence against men men <laughs> that's great <laughs> you know and plus if people don't like me they can come watch me probably get knocked out so. yeah that's that's good so That'd if you like doug go and see his comedy if you hate him <laughs> Go and watch him get punched in the head. Absolutely. You win either way. That's right. And uh, it's all for a good cause either way. So. Yeah. Uh, really, what's your comedy? What's the good cause for your comedy? Um, well, my comedy is just uh, laughs. That's where people come. You come get some laughs. That's good. Uh, and, I, and I sell merch. Yeah. You know, which all you other do sell comedians merch. hate. <laughs> Man, you got to sell. I love selling merch. People like buying it. Absolutely, you absolutely. Do your shows and they get to leave with shit. Yeah. You sell CDs though. That's yeah. old school. <laughs> yeah. Well, I got, I got a video coming out soon. That's on VHS. Oh, good. So, uh, yeah, that's exciting. You should go with the time machine so. next. <laughs> so people can buy the CD, then the time machine and go back to when people yeah. listen to CDs. Yeah. Might, might get one of those little like, cassette tapes. And Fuck there, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's funny because because uh, I had so many CDs, I still got yeah. a lot left over. So, um, but over, over the years, I've, I've sold like over ten thousand, I think. Yeah, so, easy. So that's a lot. Well, I sell I sell DVDs. It's like I think people, as much as digital is like a huge thing, and I use the digital stuff and the streaming. People still like having a physical thing yeah. when they go to a show. It's almost it's almost less to use it more just to remember the show mm. like i sell my dvd and i sign it and people are almost buying the signature because some people will be like oh i've bought the download already i just wanted the the physical thing on my shelf which yeah, is absolutely. cool and especially when people go out and stuff they want that little sort of memento for, yeah for, for going out yeah, but yeah i sure. still sell i can't believe it i still sell cds so like, that's it you know <laughs> who's, who's listening to them i'm sure they just get them and chuck them in the bin or just put them down <laughs> use it as a coaster or something. hey if you get your money who cares what they do with it <laughs> absolutely absolutely <laughs> um so how how much of a break have you taken from fighting 20 years off? Yeah, over 20 years, yeah. Over, over 20, 20 years. years off fighting. Okay, yeah. so you're coming back into fighting. How much training are you going to have before your fight? Uh, seven weeks. <laughs> seven, 20 years <laughs> off, seven weeks on. Yeah. Do you think you're going to win? Uh, as long as I put up a good show, that, that, that's, that's all I want to do. You know, if I don't yeah. get knocked down in the first 30, 30 seconds, I'll be happy. That's pretty so, good. Uh, yeah. But so, do you know who you're fighting? I have no idea. I have no idea. I saw some of the potential people and they, they look like animals. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, man, that would be the most terrifying thing for me is I think I could maybe <laughs> handle training for a fight if I knew who I was going to fight. But if it was just some fucking mystery <laughs> cunt, I would be like, oh, it's either going to be the Hulk and he'll kill me or it'll be like a, a nine-year-old and I'll look like an <laughs> asshole. Either way, you lose. Well, the thing with, with us being uh, comedians, either way, we get material out of it. So I'm like, yeah. you know, if I, get, if I get knocked out, good routine. That's you know, true. Yeah. I've done so many things that I know I would have hated for the bit. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Like my girlfriend was like, oh, you should, we should go on a cruise. And instantly I was like, well, this is going to suck, but I know I'm going to get a bit. I got 10 minutes out of it. <laughs> that's right. Not yeah. sure if it was worth the two grand that we have to fucking spend for that bit, but you know. <laughs> Yeah. Worth telling the story. Absolutely. Yeah, that's comedy. So where are you from? Uh, Western suburbs. Yeah. yeah. Uh, originally Footscray and Sunshine. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah. So you you've got very rough upbringing or Yeah, a little bit, a little or bit. You stay yeah. out of that. No, no, I was it was pretty, yeah. I was um I was even homeless for a little while. Yeah. Uh growing up, but yeah, there was uh a lot of sort of uh where I grew up, there was a lot of I grew up in flats. So there's yep. a lot of crime and you know, so and being younger and stuff, you get you get sort of caught up in all that. Mm. So you sort of start to do sort of the wrong thing yourself. Um, that's what comedy changed my life. Once yeah. I started doing comedy, I sort of got away from all that because a lot of my friends were sort of getting locked up, or um, you know, most like uh, people I grew up with, all close friends of mine passed away now, or yeah, you know, sort of locked up. Um, so yeah, you know, uh, my uh, brother-in-law got murdered as well. So it's right. a, it's pretty sort of. Um, uh, yeah, not a great sort of scene to, you know, stick yeah. around to. It, when you're younger, it seems great because, you know, it seems like a lot of fun. Well, you're exciting. invincible when you're younger. Absolutely. Until you're not. And as you get older, you see the sort yeah. of, um, all the negative side of it. So comedy absolutely saved me. So I how love did, it. So how, how did you go from running around with that kind of crowd into comedy? It's such a strange switch. Uh, it's, it's actually funny because I never wanted to be a comedian. Yeah. And, um, and I used to get around when I was young. I know it sounds so, so sort of uh, lame, but uh, when I was younger, I used to wear like track suits and a lot of gold jewelry and that. Like, yeah. Like Ali G. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> I could totally see you doing that. <laughs> and uh, the first time I, I did a, um, uh, my first gig ever, I just showed up at the es- Esplanade in yeah. St Kilda and they had a comedy uh, show on and I was with some friends and they said, um, they, I was a little bit pissed, you know, and they yeah. go, you should get up and do some comedy. You know, I go, oh, yeah, I could do it. I could do it. They go, yeah, go on, you wouldn't do it. I said, oh, I'll, I'll do it. That's, so, that is the most powerful <laughs> sentence in the world for young Australian men is you yes. wouldn't do it. He's like, yeah, I would, man. The old Doug Chapel would, but not this new guy. He's changed. Yeah, that's right. or you, if you want to get your friend to do anything from drink a beer to like eat a dead rat, all you got to go is you wouldn't do it. You're a fucking scared. <laughs> There's no way you would never, ever do that. And then next thing you know, they're fucking halfway through it. Actually, that's how I got into the fight. It's exactly how I got into the fight. <laughs> Still working. You know, yeah, because my son's actually fighting as well. He's fighting the same uh, oh, fight Oh, your cards. son's fighting He's too. He's fighting the same. And he actually uh, said... Dude, that's going to be who you fight. <laughs> Neither of you know who it's going to be. You're going to get in the ring and be like, fuck, I think I know this guy. <laughs> Yeah, it'd be easy for me. I'll sit there and say, you know, I'll kick you out the house if you don't. Uh, but, uh, but he actually said it to me. He said, you yeah. wouldn't do it. Because he said, you wouldn't do it. Yeah. Uh, Got to yeah, do it. Yeah, watch this. I'll do it. And so the same with comedy. And, yeah. And it's funny because when I, when I first did comedy, so I said, yeah, I'll do it. Um, and I said, oh, who runs the comedy? And they go, mm. that guy, like, at the end of the bar. And I walked over and I said, any chance of getting up? I didn't even know what you called it. I said, any chance of getting up and doing some, like, funny stuff? Funny talking, yeah. maybe? <laughs> and uh, he goes, you've done comedy before? I went, yeah, because we're about to win our Adelaide. And he goes, oh, I'll see if something happens and if someone doesn't show up. And he comes up to me like five minutes later and says, you're first up. And I went around the back. Fuck. And yeah. um, they had like a little bar thing set up and um, there's a the guy with like beers. And I said, I said, oh, is it okay to buy a beer? And he goes, do you want to buy a beer? I go, yeah, can I buy a beer? He goes, buy a beer. I go, what? And I thought he didn't want to serve me because of how I looked with the tracksuit yeah. and the, you know. I go, what, you don't want to serve me? He goes, you want? I said, yeah. He goes, you don't have to buy a beer. The beer's free. I go, fuck, what a fucking year, man. And then I'm, you were sold on comedy yeah. for life. Okay, give me six. Yeah. He goes, no, you can come back. And I go, no, no, just in case I'm shit. <laughs> <laughs> and he's don't want me. At least I got some beers out of it. Fuck so, yeah. yeah, so I said, what a great thing this is. Yeah. So as soon as I got up on stage that first time, I go, man, I just want to keep doing this. It was great. Yeah. So yeah. did you go Did you go well? I thought I did. Yeah. But uh, they actually, uh, they filmed it. And, uh, I oh, that's got cool. It. You still have it? Oh, it's, it's terrible. That's great. <laughs> but that's cool to see. I have yeah. my first ever set because I, I did the lounge uh, for the first time and I didn't know they were filming, which is great. And now I have it. And I'm like, ah, look how, yeah. look at that. Who the fuck is that comedian? Yeah. Oh, man. I was, man. Yeah, it was just, uh, but at the time, I thought it was great. You know, I just thought yeah. it, was, it was great. And yeah, but yeah. And I was so wrong at the start as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just shit you wouldn't say now. No, oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Because yeah. I just didn't care. You know? yeah, yeah. And, I, and I didn't know. I didn't know, you know. Mm. So I was offending people and, you know. But I got a couple of laughs and I just felt like, you know, how good's this? Free Well, free yeah, that's, that's the thing. It's like you get you get a laugh, you get a fucking free Coke and yeah. that's that's where it starts, you know. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a really cool field to be in. Do you... Do you think that that comedy has changed much since you started? Absolutely. How yeah. long have you been doing it for? Uh, Twenty-two years. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, it's it's changed heaps. It's changed. It's changed like a few times throughout sort of my career and stuff. Right. Yeah. So I think uh, it's important uh, for comics to um, sort of keep up to date. I think mm. with with 
so the changes yeah um but even with uh youtube and stuff too you know mm. it's, it's funny because there's some um older comics which you know uh that sort of don't like that but uh, you know i think you've got to embrace all that i love all that you know for sure um it's, it's like me trying to get my videos out now it's, uh, well yeah that's <laughs> that's what's so cool is like you're doing videos and shit check yeah. out doug chapel if you if you'd yeah, like subscribe it. i need subscribers i'll give you all the links in the description <laughs> all that kind of shit but that's what's cool is like a lot of people, especially when the online stuff was really emerging in 2012, it was either they ignored it or what was more common is they just outright hated upon it yeah. heaps. And it's like, what are you doing? Yeah. It's like, this is how it's changing. It's Absolutely. like, it's, it's like, I don't know if you musicians hated on people for putting their stuff on streaming services instead of only selling CDs. It's yeah. like, bro, what are you doing? Oh, absolutely. It's you changing. Know. You better get on board. Yeah. And I, like, I think it's changed for the better. I, I love it. I think mm. it's really good, you know, but it's, uh, well, it's but just I, brought more people into it. Yeah. At the, like more consumers who are not comedians at the end of the day, it's just made it more available for more people to get into it. And it's absolutely good for everyone. Yeah. And it's it's like uh, when when I started, the sort of only sort of um, medium, like any place we could sort of um, get sort of exposure you know, it was through like television. Yeah. You know, so and if you weren't in with the right people, that right group, you had sort yeah. of no access to sort of anyone else, but the audience you're performing in front front of now. You know what I mean? You know, well, you're that, all around yeah. the world now. That's you know, I heard Joe Rogan's talking about you. That's very cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what did you What did you hear about him? Hey, I have I have heard this. This is not some made. I've got a friend Monty Franklin who actually um, is an Australian comedian, but he actually yeah. uh, works over in the states. And he was actually opening for Joe Rogan. And, That's so uh, cool. Yeah, and uh, he actually rang the guy from the Comics Lounge and said, uh, "Lewis Spears." I was with Joe Rogan, and he kept talking about Lewis Spears. So, that's so cool how cool is that how cool is that that's that's like yeah very very cool that must i, I guess maybe i made an impression on him because i i thought I, I went into the meeting him with like i'm not gonna ask for a photo i'm not gonna ask for anything from him i'm just gonna be nice and talk to him as a comedian and then he's gonna forget me and then that's totally fine because that's exactly what i would do <laughs> if someone came up to me and was talking to me it was nice i'd be like Oh, that tall guy was kind of cool, but in a week, boom, it'd leave my head. But uh, I guess I made an impression. That's very, very cool to hear. Yeah. It's, uh, I don't know what's going to happen with that, but that's cool. Yeah. Did you hang out with him much? Yeah. So I got to hang out with him. Uh, so Andrew Santino was doing Joe's show yep. at the comedy store. So he took me back stage to where Joe's area was. And I just about an hour, maybe two hours just hanging out with everyone that was backstage and yeah. uh yeah yeah like we hung out at, at the little secret comics bar and then just oh, wow. backstage at uh behind joe's stage it was really really very cool it's um he's such a he's an interesting person where i would say he's probably the only person i've met who is exactly the same as he is online or on yeah, tv yeah. or whatever like when i was talking to him i realized that he doesn't do anything to himself or his personality when he does the podcast because mm. like me i'm i would say i'm definitely an amped up version of myself i'm definitely myself but i amp up certain characteristics talking to him it felt like i was on the podcast that's how the same the energy was yeah it was very interesting yeah i was, I was similar because when he did uh, the comics lounge i mm. uh, was in backstage and that with him but same thing yeah and start talking about all these like deep and meaningful things and yeah he's totally go, like that yeah and i go i, I felt exactly what you said like i was yeah on a podcast with him you it's know? interesting yeah it's uh because yeah he always goes oh i don't do anything special i just i just talk and i'm like now i, I didn't believe him before but now i'm like oh <laughs> you really just be yourself and millions of people listen it's kind of cool yeah um but yeah, so you, how long have you been working at the Comics Lounge? For? Uh, oh, for a while. So if you don't know, that's the, yeah. the biggest club in, in Australia. So every, every comedian who comes to Australia pretty much comes to the lounge. Yeah. I've been doing the, I start off uh, doing the, um, uh, like, I'm, I'm like headline and MC like for years, but uh, I started doing Mondays. Uh, for about 10 years, I think I did Mondays and I used to do prank phone calls at the end. Remember, yeah, yes. Mondays, yeah. Yes. And uh, so I did that for about 10 years and then moved my show to Tuesday. So I do Tuesdays then. I think I've done Tuesdays for like two years or something. So yeah. I've had like a residency there probably for about 12, 13 years. So. That's awesome. Yeah, so it's for a long while. That's very It's funny because cool. people always say like, um, 
uh, you know, it's sort of easy for me because I'm there all the time and stuff. But to get in, like the first time, for me to get yeah. a gig there the first time, man, I just I just tried all the time. They'd cancel gigs. My first gig there, they gave me like four minutes, you know. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so. Yeah, the, the, the boys who run the lounge, they're a tough nut to crack. Yeah, it yeah. takes you a while, but if you can get them, they'll stand with you. I love them. Yeah. Um, cause yeah, my, mine's, mine's very similar. I tried for ages and I got my first spot and then I didn't do it again for like a year. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what happens, yeah, yeah. you know. But once you prove yourself to them, that's, yeah, you know, and yeah. it's, it's a great club, you know, and they're really mm. supportive. Yeah, they, they, that's another thing. They're, 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 they're such nurturers of talent, yeah. I think. Yeah, absolutely. Which is, which is good, which I think is what's a real positive aspect of the comedy community because... It's such a it's such an industry where you can't really be taught it. Mm. You just have to learn it yourself and have people around you telling you when you fucked up and telling you when you did well because at the end of the day there's no like actual lesson plan or whatever of how to become good like a like a mathematician would. Uh, absolutely. And I'll say that I have like uh, you know some of the newer comics ask me questions about like you know um, you know how to do comedy or they, yeah. they'll sort of like someone and they'll sort of copy what they do but I think you just got to be yourself because everyone's mm. different if what works for you doesn't work for somebody else so you have to be yourself and you have to find your own ways you have to stumble and yeah you know, and then and work out how to sort of get you know like when you do like a crappy gig somewhere in your head that's that's where you learn the most because you go home for sure and you're like man you know what what could i've done you know because my, the gig was shit but someone else had a good gig how'd they get them so then in your yeah. mind you start to think and then you go over your material and change and that's how you, you grow become better yeah because i because i get lots of people messaging me like oh how do i start or i I'm, i think i'm going to be shit and i just tell them i'm like you're going to suck yeah. and that's totally normal and yeah. totally fine don't be discouraged by it yeah. because i feel like not many people hear that of like do people go oh yeah try comedy it's great fun but no one gets told you can try it but you're going to be shit absolutely and that's normal and mm. everyone went through that um, but that's, uh, but you know, I love, um, you know, comics when they tell me about like sort of gigs where they've had hard gigs and stuff like that. Then yeah. you see them do a gig and it's a good gig and stuff like that. But I said, if you don't have bad gigs, I, it's almost like I don't respect the comic. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? I love, I love them going through that hard hardness and, and growing and learning. For and sure. Stuff like that. And that's what I used to love about Mondays is like the, the Monday nights had so many. Like Tommy Little used to come before anyone knew who he was and, yeah. and would practice and, you know, used to say like, because um, I'd talk to the crowd a lot. So Tommy yeah. said, oh, you know, you know. So just watching people develop and grow and, you know, like Troy Kinney used to come to the Monday. So so many people used to come to Monday nights. Yeah. You see them grow over the years and now doing great things. It's awesome to see. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think yeah. The the where I've learned the most is doing like that Mondays and now the Tuesday yeah. show is just working shit out because it's one of the only rooms in the country where it's like a paying audience that want to see stand up comedy. So it's like it's a really good gauge of is this a good joke or how can it improve? Cause it, which which you just don't get in like a bar where some people are listening and some people aren't. It's, yeah, it's a really good place. And then, uh, I've done horrible gigs, horrible places. What's oh, the man. worst gig you've done? Oh, man, the worst gig I've done, it's funny because I, I told someone the other day this and they said, if you did it now, you, I'd probably do a good gig. But I showed up, it was a corporate gig, um, but they said to me it was for like real estate agents. So I'm sitting there going, I don't yeah. want to overdress. And it was at a place in, I think, uh, Ballarat. Uh, the, um, yeah. But what it was, I thought it was just a pub. But it was yeah. like the the region, the ballroom upstairs. It was black tie, and I just I didn't want to overdress. I just wear like jeans and a t shirt. They did they didn't want to let me in. Uh, they said oh, I sit in. And they said oh, but sit over there. So I'm sitting in the kitchen, yeah. right? And uh, so then, um, but just before I come on, they they bring me out. I sit at the table, and then the guy gets up, says oh, I just have to do a toast to the queen. And I thought it was a joke. So I started laughing. That's so this weird. Is, this is no, how long ago no was shit. this? Oh, this is a while ago, and it happened again not that long ago. A toast, toast to the, the queen. queen. Yeah, it's happened to me twice now. Fuck. And they stand up. I'm, this is a, at first I, I couldn't believe it. I thought it was a joke. That's why I was laughing. Yeah. They stand up and they go to a, a royal highness, the queen, and they go the queen. And they Dude, go, I didn't even know those people existed <laughs> here. <laughs> Neither did I. That's crazy. I go, what the fuck is this? This is you know. So I got up and and it's funny because uh, it was at the same time. The only that, time I even think of the queen queen is when a public holiday is on and i go oh what, what's happening and someone goes it's the queen's birthday i'm like oh that bitch cool 
<laughs> Thanks, whoever you are. <laughs> so that's what happened. And, but what I, there was all these, uh, it was a real estate uh, like uh, company or something, but yeah. it was all like the, I don't know, the general managers and CEOs and, you know, and everyone was like over 60 and uh, all I had this money. And then I was talking to people at the table. So I tried to like, you know, before I go on, maybe sort of make some friends. Yeah. And um, and they're talking about having all these uh, vineyards and stuff like that. And I go, so I'll, I'll be like, I have half a bottle of wine at home. And they go, <laughs> Anyway, uh, just turn it back to me. Just broke so, scum. So, so I couldn't even break into a conversation. Look at this, this fucking idiot who's not a millionaire. I bet he doesn't even toast to the queen. What a dickhead. And then when I got up on stage, yeah. uh, I'm, I'm doing the, the gig and then all these people come out with desserts. Yeah. Right? And then Which just, is the worst when you're performing. So, so bad. Because they all look around and they go, oh, what are you getting? And they're fucking arranging yeah. to get food and all that shit. So and then they're, they're just they're not paying attention. Horrible. And then they, they start eating. So I said, oh, maybe if I start talking to them, I'll get their attention. So I'm, I'm sitting there going, hey, yeah. how you doing? So I said, a guy go, hey, go, mate, what's your name? And he looked, this is no shit. He looked up to me and goes, you're the entertainment, not me. So entertain. <laughs> Wow, <laughs> so, bro, I I, that's so rude. I kind of respect it. <laughs> and I went, uh, okay. Um, <laughs> and so I said to another Shut guy. Shut up, peasant. Entertain me. <laughs> so that's said, so rude. So I said, who's got the worst job here? Right? They didn't want to answer me. I said, come on, who's got the worst job? They go, him over there. I go, well, what do you do? And he's like, Auc- auctioneer. I said, oh, okay. So I'm just trying to ad-lib. I go, you like that at home? Do you like, uh, you know, someone comes over, you say, do you want a coffee? Do you want one sugar? One sugar? Do we say two sugars? Do we say three sugars? And he goes, no, don't do that. And I go, <laughs> okay, mate. Um, yeah, so uh, so then I sat there and, and at the same time, they wanted to uh, legalise euthanasia in Darwin. And yeah. uh, everyone was old except for about four people. Yeah. And uh, so I just said, mate, I'm, I'm crashing and burning. So, so just, you're I'm, tanking and you're like, oh, I'll get it with my euthanasia no, material. No, no, no. I said, mate, I'm, I'm gone. So I'm going down in flames. So, <laughs> so I actually said to him, I said, um, I said who, who thinks that it should, uh, uh, euthanasia should be legal? You know, no one's answered me, of yeah. course, you know. I said, I reckon we go one better. Not just make it legal, make it compulsory to anyone over the age of 60. That yeah. way there'd only be like four people here and I'd be having a good gig. <laughs> <laughs> so, That's good. And, and to this day, it's the only gig when I finished and um, no one wanted to clap. You know, even wow. if you had a bad gig, you know, people will go, hey, you know. Yeah, but, even but, bad gigs, they'll be like, yay, he's gone. Yeah. But no clapping like, at all. One person was like this and someone just looked at him and they went, oh. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> And then, and uh, it was, a, I think it was a Saturday night or Friday night, M- Monday morning. Yeah. Right. Uh, I get up to like, uh, oh, like before nine o'clock, about yeah. 50 messages on my phone from the agency that booked me. Wow. And uh, yeah, they didn't want to pay me or anything. Really? Was, yeah. So it was that bad. Fuck. Did you, you know? get paid though? Uh, I got paid. Fuck but, yeah. But it was- <laughs> That's good. That's good. You, you got to go, hey, I, I said I would tell my jokes. I didn't guarantee laughter. Exactly. And That's I what earned you paid every for. cent. I earned every cent of that freaking gig. So oh, I wanted for my money. sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's that's the thing. Like you're not, <laughs> you're you're not guaranteeing <laughs> laughter. Like you're going, oh, I reckon it's funny, but you know, you're paying for my jokes, whether or not you laugh, whether because you've got a shit life, that's your thing. Uh, so uh, you got to pay for that. But I've I've done crazy gigs. I did uh, um another. I've done gigs like bikey clubs and yeah, you know, war zones and yeah. Uh, but I did another weird. We got time to talk about. It? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah, I, we once got I start. We got an hour. Once I, I start talking, I don't shut up. So. Yeah, no. <laughs> We got 40 minutes yeah. left. But um, I did one for like a, a bikey club and uh, <laughs> yep. I show up and um, uh, they had like a big like compound Yeah. and they got like a little wide gate in the in like compound and some of the bikers are standing out the front. So I go to get in, they go, what are you so doing? So it looks like my warehouse basically. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I, thought, I thought I was coming back to the gig. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So they go, what are you doing? I go, oh, um, I'm like the comedian, you know, they go. You better be fucking funny. I go, well, I hope I am. <laughs> so, it's like, no, guys, I was planning to tank in front of you. <laughs> so, so they let me in. Yeah. Uh, and there's, you got to go for this big steel door and then they've got like these bars. Then when you go inside, it's like a nightclub. You know, right. They had music playing and, and stuff like that. So I went up to like the president and mm. um, I said, oh, okay. Is, uh, How did you get that gig? For an agency. I got, I got a terrible agent. That's so, so <laughs> fucking weird. Yeah. That a bikey club is just get booking corporate entertainers through a website. <laughs> That's so strange. Yeah. And uh, and it's funny because they had like a full on bar and Criminal stuff. background, please. <laughs> Not a snitch required. <laughs> I think that's what they did. Uh, that's why they got me, I think. No. Nah. Um, yeah, so they got like a bar and stuff. But then I was sitting there going, oh, things get a bit hairy. Do you know what I mean? There's no, they are security. Yeah. So, you know. Yeah. And I, I got glass not um, like a month earlier, right? 
Uh, that's that's a funny story too. And my daughter's my daughter's three year old birthday party. I was dressed as a wiggle, um, but yeah, I digress. Um, but it's uh, so now so so you know I was a bit worried about glasses getting glass. So I went yeah. up to like the president. I said, oh, is there any like you know stuff I shouldn't talk about? Because, yeah. you know, I don't want people to go like, you know, they're not going to call the cops or anything. They just throw stuff, throwing glasses at me. Yeah. And uh, he goes, mate, you can talk about whatever you want. Whatever you want. Lie. You know? That's yeah. a lie. Every time you hear that, that's not true. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so then um, I said, oh, I just uh, finished a tour with like Chopper. He goes, oh, no, no, don't, don't mention Chopper. You know, if you mention Chopper, they'll, they'll want to kill you. You know, I went, really? Oh, okay. Uh, you know, I said, There's, my brother law. <laughs> I don't what? know. I don't know. But I said, uh, my brother in law's um, uh, like a president of another. Uh, bikey gang, you know, yeah. and they go, no, no, I'm mention that. I don't know you're affiliated with another club or something. I'm not. I'm just that's my brother-in-law. He goes, no, no, you mention that, they'll go nuts. They'll hate you. Yeah. You know, I go, well, you said I could talk about anything. The two things I brought up, you yeah, know, fuck. I can't talk about. And I said, is it okay to like bag people? He goes, oh, fucking idiot, you want to bag? I go, I'm not, I'm, I don't know. Just if someone says something, is it okay to, you know? He goes, oh, yeah. fucking don't say anything to those guys at the front. He goes, oh, that guy at the back, he might be all right. Choco, he's he's all right. You know, so oh, okay. So uh, I get up. How do they have a club? <laughs> like, like hearing this is like, oh, well, don't talk to him. Don't talk about bikies. Don't <laughs> talk shit. It's like you get there and it's like, all right, we're all going to sit in silence because if anyone says anything, they'll get bashed. <laughs> Enjoy. That's how I felt. And it's funny because, you know, you, 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 you uh, similar to me, when you get on stage, you have no fear. You don't, you yeah, don't care. Yeah. You know, so beforehand, I'm like, I'm shitting myself. I get on stage and I start bagging people and, and stuff yeah. like that. And, uh, and then one, and they're, they're, they're great. Yeah, they're really great. When I got on stage, they're really great and, and stuff like that. And I was hanging so much shit on them, and they were just like laughing and stuff. But one guy, I kept going back to hanging yeah. shit on. Them. Then he got like really angry, you know. And he goes, "What do you keep fucking picking on me for?" You know. He goes, "You know, fucking, you, you, is there something wrong with me?" You know. Yeah. I go, "No, no, 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 it doesn't mean to you." Uh, hey, Choco. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he was the one that was all right to talk to. Him. Yeah. So I go back to him. So, um, but yeah, get some, and then on the break, I was doing two sets. Um, I come off the break, and uh, the the guy gets me and goes, oh, "I'll fix you up now." I come, come they me to like a back room yeah and uh no windows in that close would you door. like to be paid in cash cocaine <laughs> or hookers <laughs> and i said yes to all three um <laughs> no he took me to like a room and he goes oh you know i'll fix you up now and yeah. it just i'm just mucking around i go i hope you mean pay me and he's yeah. like what what do you mean Ah, oh, this guy's always on. This guy's always on. But he goes, oh, one of, there's a president from other clubs there, you know, yeah. from their ch- other chapters. He said, you know, uh, we want to, you know, do you want to do gigs for, for you them do a as tour? Well? And uh, yeah, and I'm like the fucking... world's most dangerous tour. <laughs> I'm in a room with him, and there's no yeah. windows or doors. Like the door, there's a big guy standing in front of. And I yeah. go, well, I'm not going to fucking say no, am I? Yeah. Have you guys here? So as soon as I finished the gig, I rang the agency and I said, mate, I don't mind doing some gigs for him, but I don't want him to keep doing. It. I don't want to be like the. You don't want to be the bikey club comedian. That's that's right, you know, you don't, don't, I don't want to show up, so yeah. they get sick of my material, I show up on second prize in the raffle or something, you know, so it's, uh, but it was a fun gig, they were great. I did a couple others for like uh, the other chapters and then that, they were all fine. The other chapters, stuff. you're a bloody inside agent. You know. <laughs> you'd show up to one and you'd be like, all right, uh, your second set was good, so you're getting initiated, they bring out the tattoo gun. <laughs> like, oh no, I've already got Hell's Angels here, do it on the other arm. <laughs> what? <laughs> but yeah, I've, I've done some crazy gigs, yeah, so. That's you know. funny. Mm. Yeah, it's uh, those. I I don't know. I love crowds of dangerous people, cause cause it's just it's like walking a tightrope of either they'll piss themselves or murder you, and it's like <laughs> it's a real test of skill to like diffuse situations. Yeah, yeah. It's like most hecklers will be like, "Oh, you're not good." They don't really bring threaten your life, <laughs> so that's a good thing to be able to turn down. <laughs> Yeah, oh, it's crazy. And I did I did shows with uh, Chopper as well. Yeah, how was that? Uh, yeah, yeah, it was, it was um, uh, yeah, interesting. You know, like it was, uh, you know, people have different opinions of him and stuff like that. But he was always great uh, with me and stuff. So yeah. you know, I can't really say anything uh, bad. But the first time I did a show with him, um, I always think with Chopper, if you don't like Chopper, you're you're not allowed to like Ned Kelly either, because <laughs> they're the same person just in a different era. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, so, but um, the first time, because he rang me up, because he, he knew my dad, yeah. uh, Chopper, uh, years ago. But uh, he rang me up and he goes, oh, Dougie, um, you know, got some gigs. Oh, Ch- uh, Chop, uh, not Chopper, uh, Jacko. They were doing a show together, but they, yeah. um, uh, Jacko had to do other shows or something. So I, I filled in. So he rings me up and goes, oh, I'll get you to do these shows and stuff. Come around to my place and, and stuff. I go, I don't know where you live, you know. Guess yeah. you've been to my place before, you know. Yeah. And I go, no, I haven't. And he goes, yes, you have. I'm gone. Oh, okay. Can you just give me the address again? I didn't want to argue with him. I haven't been there. So I get around to his place. Uh, yeah. I go there. We go, and he goes, oh, make sure you dress up. 
You know? Right. So, but what's dress up for chopper? That's what, exactly. Is that exactly. like a t-shirt instead of a singlet? I think. Is that ears? What's dressed up for <laughs> chopper? <is>. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think it. I think yeah. I think it's a, a nice tracksuit. Uh, no, because <laughs> I wore a full-on suit. Because yeah. You guys make sure you dress up. You said it like four times. So I wore this full-on suit. I get to his place. As soon as I knock on the door, he goes, oh, "I just got to have a shower." So he takes yeah. off. He's in a towel. He takes off to have a shower. I go. I'm standing in the, his lounge room, and he's got about like eight mates. All stand yep. around. Do you know? have a nice house? Um, yeah, Normal it wasn't house. too bad. Yeah, and yeah, nice place. You yeah, know? and uh, and but I've been there many times, like um, uh, like after that. But that was yeah. like the first time it was weird because he's got all these mates. They got tats all over their yeah. their face and neck and everything, and they're all chatting and stuff. So I'm there in a suit. You know, because he said dress up. So I'm sitting there and in they're suit. they're not dressed up? Nah, no one's dressed up, just me. So they're talking to each other, looking at me. Everyone's going like, fucking, who's this guy? He's a fucking cop, mate. What's this guy? You know, fucking, what's this guy in the suit? <laughs> fucking, who's the guy in the suit? You know, so I'm like, fuck, so I'm feeling like really uncomfortable. Yeah. So um, I sit down on the couch and I'm, yeah. I just feel like tiny because they're all sitting there and they're talking and, and looking over at me. Yeah. And I don't know anyone. And um, Margaret, uh, <laughs> Chopper's wife, comes out and uh, she was out here at the time, you know. Yeah. And she sat down and she goes, so I said, oh, okay, I better make small talk. As Chopper comes out of the shower, I go, oh, when's the baby due? And Chopper stopped and goes, what fucking baby? Oh, no. No shit. Fuck. Right? And all these guys look at me. I'm like, what? Dude. He goes, what baby? I'm like, oh, fucking I don't know. <laughs> I didn't know what to say. I just went blank. I went, oh, I don't know. Yeah, what do you I don't, say? I don't know. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I thought she's so fat. I thought she was pregnant. <laughs> so you can't. <laughs> no. There's no comeback from that. No, no. But then, then, but then he goes, nah, just joking. Nah, it's June. A couple oh. of weeks. I went, oh, man. He goes, I think you're cracking a pressure, uh, uh, question there, Ducky. And yeah, I go, fucking oh, hell. Yeah, so. That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> We went to the gig. They're shooting guns out of the sunroof. And, really? Oh, yeah, it was crazy. That's you nuts. Know, uh, but um, but I, did, I did a few shows with Chopper, a few tours and stuff. So yeah. what was his show? It's funny because uh, people used to, sometimes people would complain after the show. Um, and I'd say, well, that's the show. You know, because I go, oh, didn't I didn't know you, you would talk about jail and like, you know, bashing people. and go, What the fuck that's, else that's, would he talk about? I said, that's not, I said, Why yeah. did you buy tickets if you didn't want that? Yeah, and I couldn't, I said, so what, it's like going to like a, a church and sitting there going, oh, I didn't know they're going to talk religious stuff. Yeah, you know that's I mean? weird. weird. It's like coming to my show and be like, I didn't know I was going to say cunt. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> but yeah, so people, some, not a lot, but even and again, someone, people come up and go, oh, I didn't know I was going to talk about all this. I go, well, it's Chopper. What, what else? What, what, what are you coming That's for? So weird. Yeah, yeah. But he'd just he'd tell stories like that. Um, so was it funny or was it just stories? Oh, yeah, it's just story. He'd make them sort of a bit funny, you know. Mm. Um, yeah, but they'll, they'll, they'll stories. Like, you know, like cool. his books. If people liked his books, then, yeah. you know, that sort of... Um, but that's what how he sort of advertised it. That's why he had sort of comedy. And the first time I did the shows, because everyone's... Um, uh, it was bizarre for me um, when I did the ones when I filled in for Jacko because there were yeah. big big posters everywhere of him and Jacko, right? And his mate his mate introduced guy, okay, uh, fucking shut up everyone, fucking shut up. That's him sleep. Fucking shut up everyone. Uh, anyway, fucking Jacko's not here, right? Instead, we've got a mate of ours, fucking Dougie Chapel. And that's it? Yeah. So I walk <laughs> on and no shit, everyone's like, boo, fuck off. Because who's Jacko? Who's Jacko? Uh, it was like an ex-football player, AFL football player. Oh, okay. So he was a known guy. So yeah, they, they yeah. wanted him So they're him all there. there to right. see they're like, fuck. Fuck. I'll walk out. They go, fucking who's this guy? Yeah. You know, so fucking boo. Fucking. <laughs> you know. Wow. So, but once you do a couple of jokes and you bag a few people, they sort of get on your side and, yeah. you know, and then you go, fuck Jacko. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Um, well, what's, what's, uh, what's next for you? Um, oh, a few things. I've got a few things. So the fight, I've, I'm concentrating on the fight at the moment because yeah. I, I want to try to get some. Are level. you training hard? Uh, You've lost a lot of weight. Yeah, I have. I have. Yeah, I dropped, I dropped like 20 kilos. Wow, yeah. that's heaps. Yeah. In how long? Uh, ooh, a couple of months. That's heaps. Yeah. Uh, so, but I'm nowhere as fit as I should be. Yeah. Nowhere near as fit. You don't sound very confident. <laughs> nah, nah. I'm not, well, no. I, I went for a run. I, 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 I go for a run with my son. Right. Yeah. This is no shit. Right. <laughs> I'm running. He's doing a brisk walk. Yeah. At the same pace that I'm running. Right. <laughs> and have you seen Rocky? The, yeah. You know, I always feel like the, you know, I go out for a run in the morning. Yeah. You know, I, I run from here to there and I get a stitch. I'm like, oh, you know, I go, man, this, this is killing me. The other morning I wake up, I set the alarm to go for a run. I wake yeah. up, it's raining, you know. Yeah. I go, fuck this. <laughs> <laughs> if I get knocked out, I get knocked out. I'm fucking, I'm going back to sleep. Oh, fuck. You I'd rather, rather be cold. Yeah. <laughs> so, fuck. yeah. So, I'm not doing as much training as I should. When I was young, I trained like, you know, mm. I can't train like that, friggin', you know. Yeah. yeah I've, you know, when I, when I was younger, I had a lot of, like, anger and, you know, yeah. you want to train and get all that anger out and, and mm. stuff like that, you know. 
um, I, I enjoy comedy and stuff now, so I'm not. I'm not. That's ang- the I'm thing. Not, I'm not angry that, anymore. So. Yeah, I was very. I used to be a personal trainer, mm. and I was so similar. Like gym five days a week. I was ten kilos heavier than I am now. I was fucking ripped. And then I found comedy, and I was like, "This is so much better yeah. than going to the gym." <laughs> and then I just lost all my progress, became a skinny <laughs> cunt again. And now, I, now every year I try and get back to where I was, which would really only take me about six months of continual training yeah. i know how to do it but every time i get a week in and i'm like you know what i'd just rather write jokes <laughs> and i hate myself for it but it's fucking true yeah, well I had, I had mcdonald's last night at 2 a.m bro you're gonna <laughs> lose <laughs> and the other worst is that's the third time this week <laughs> <laughs> weighing in at 300 kilos just eating a Big Mac. <laughs> I, can't, I can't help myself. Because I get home from shows and yeah. I'll be like hungry. And I'm like, oh, fuck I'm going for a run in the morning anyway. That's what makes it really you know? hard mm. is when you get home late after a gig and like nothing's open. And then so you eat shit. And then in the morning, you tr- you're supposed to wake up early for the gig for, for, to go to gym. But you were out since two making people laugh. So you get up at 12, your whole day's fucked. And you're like, yeah. oh, well, might as well eat more Maccas and play World of Warcraft. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, world. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. So yeah, that 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 that's been sort of tough. I'm trying. Yeah. I have I, I, you know, like I trained today. Yeah. yeah, I went for a run. If you call that running, I go for like a, a shuffle. Yeah, you know, but, a, yeah. a stitch limp. <laughs> <sighs> that's what it's like. So yeah. I eat the wrong food. I don't train as much as I should, but you know, I still got. You got to win it with heart. Yeah, yeah. I still got six weeks left. <laughs> I'll put the work in three days before. <laughs> Fuck it. Yeah, so, Worked for me in high school. Uh, so I went to, um, uh, like last week, last Saturday, uh, I was at the gym. Yeah. And everyone's just like so much fitter than I am. Yeah. I just look at them and like, even when I was at the gym today, I'm looking at like, there's a there's a guy there who's a big guy. He's, you know, yeah. overweight and stuff like that. And he's like 10 times fitter than me. Like, that shits me so much. <laughs> Sometimes you're seeing someone, you look at them, and you go, "Oh, what a slob!" And then you just see them like lift 500 kilos and throw it across the room, and you're like, "Ah, oh, fuck!" Yeah, he's using that. So, um, so after after the fight, what about comedy? Do you have anything coming uh, up? With comedy, that? Um, I've always got like tours and, and yeah and stuff like that uh, coming up and cruise ships and stuff. Um, uh, but I'm also riding a uh, like a TV show at yeah. the moment too. So you know, uh, once all that gets, I've been doing it for like a couple of years and stuff. But once yeah. I get that, I want to start trying to get that up and. That's yeah. cool. Yeah, so produce that. Sweet. Hopefully. Yeah. All right. Well, what we'll do, Doug, is yep. uh, we're going to do a part of the podcast called Miscellaneous Bit at the End. Yeah, cool. That's where we answer life advice questions sent in <laughs> from listeners. And uh, often it is just things that we shouldn't know about other people's lives. Awesome. And it's that. fucking great. Um, so I've got a few different uh, subject lines here that we can choose from. We'll do, oh, cool. we'll do one or two. Uh I've got I thought I was going to die in a terrorist attack or Frankston love story turned cuck glory I've got to hear that one I think I've got, so I've got to hear that I one I agree I agree <laughs> and look how fucking long it is so I think we found the one we may, have, may only have time for one um, but I think it'll be worth it alright Frankston love story turned cuck glory <laughs> hey Lewis I love your work my name is John and I have a killer story for you a few months ago, I met this girl Sarah on a t- on Tinder and we hit it off. For our third date, we bought some red wine and watched a few movies at her place while her family was away. We got pretty drunk and ran out of durries, so naturally she drove us to 7-Eleven to buy more uh, and we dented the side of the car on the way home. We watched about half of Bohemian Rhapsody before we got uh, distracted. Okay, so they had sex. This is good. Pretty good for a third date. Winning. Um, Fast forward to the morning. I wake up to the sound of her pacing around, freaking the fuck out about something. I thought, maybe her parents are coming home early, which is fine because I can just leave. That's not my problem, right? She woke me up and uh, because I was pretending to be asleep uh, and shoved her phone in my face. There were paragraphs, man. (laughs) So many big (laughs) paragraphs. Big ass text from her ex-boyfriend who blew up her phone during the night. At around 1.30 a.m., which is definitely when we were having sex, uh, (laughs) they started out very sad, talking about their failed relationship. He clearly hadn't moved on and thought last night would be a good time to sort things out, I guess. I still wasn't sure why she was showing me this until I read further. uh, And a text said, you've clearly moved on. 
you just don't know what you want. And then I came to your house last night to pick up a few things. <laughs> oh no, that's not good. Fuck. I, and then the text said, I only walked halfway up to your driveway. You really need to get thicker curtains. <laughs> Fuck. This motherfucker definitely went further than the driveway. I had this girl in pink handcuffs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Best case scenario, the poor guy got to watch the second half of Bohemian Rhapsody. <laughs> Although I wouldn't be surprised if he stayed for the show. I'm just hoping I don't get bashed or something. Not sure how these situations are usually handled. Anyway, we had coffee and I left shortly afterwards in her Adidas jumper, which fit me way better. Gee, that's a bit of a gender reversal, right? He took her jumper. Yeah, yeah. Generally goes the other way around. Maybe, maybe, I, I think I know what you've done. The reason why it fits you better than her is you're probably wearing her ex boyfriend's jumper. <laughs> I think that's what's really going on. That's why it fits you and not her. <laughs> um,. Kind of a nice souvenir, I guess. She was super nice about it, considering her position. It was a great experience, and she's a lovely girl. My question for you is... Oh, this is great for us. How can I transform this crazy experience into a stand-up piece? I'm a total beginner with zero experience and a lot of stories, so any advice will be greatly appreciated. Keep up the good work. Look forward to your next show. What's his name? John. John. First off, John, um, can I have that girl's phone number? Uh, that'd be awesome. <laughs> and your handcuffs. <laughs> <laughs> Whose handcuffs were they? The pink handcuffs. Pink or the handcuffs. His? I don't know. Yeah. For, I guess surely that would be that'd be a bit weird to bring on a third I, day. I was gonna say, yeah, is right. handcuffs? Yeah, but that's very Rhapsody presumptuous. Yeah. They must have been her, <laughs> but also very ballsy of her to bring them out, which I would think is the first time they've had sex. Yeah. It was the third date. If she brings out, oh, by the way, this is... Because you know what? If you bring out, like, handcuffs the first time you fuck in her <laughs> head, she's like, this is vanilla for me. <laughs> and it only goes up from here. Absolutely, it'd have to be. So it's like, you know, third time you have sex, you'll be wearing them. Even that all, she's used to people running off on her. <laughs> so <laughs> got a handcuff on there. Yeah. But, but um, uh, yes, comedy routine. Absolutely, you could do a comedy routine. Dude, it's... Kind of, a, I mean, it's there's so many elements in that, like, like just what just what we did there. Why does she have pink handcuffs? Her bringing them out on the first date, that's funny. Yeah. That's a funny idea. There's there's a lot of things in there. What's good about that, and it's it's like what I think makes the best jokes is stories that are interesting before they're funny. 100%. Like 100%. that held that wasn't very funny other than like this the shock factor of the story, but I was enthralled the whole way through. So you kind of have a little bit of an easier job of you have the story and you have everyone's attention, all you need to do is put jokes in there. 100%. You don't have to change the story, yeah. you just got to make it funnier. 100%. That's what... Because um, I love telling stories <coughs> yeah. uh, on stage. And um, and a lot of them are true stories. But yeah. what you do is you exaggerate little bits or you yeah. go into exactly what you said, uh, which I think is great and a great way to go about it is that... Because if that's the first time, you know, you've had sex and she brings out handcuffs, that is yeah. like the most basic, you know... For her, that's yeah, a missionary. You know, <laughs> this, yeah, that's right. It, it's going to get fucking weirder. So, yeah. you know, and then talk about like, you know, what, what you know, like... You know, fucking what's next, and then you know. Yeah, because the because I, I often with stories like that is is sometimes all it takes is uh, going, what was she thinking during this, and her perspective of this of this. Why does she have that? What's she doing? Where's it going to go from here? Do I want to pursue this? If handcuffs is, is ground zero, yeah, you know. Yeah. So there's I think there's a lot of elements in that. I think uh, I don't know. You just got to, like what we were saying at the start of the podcast. Go out there, tell the story, and be a shit comedian for a little bit. Yeah, Until absolutely. you're not. Yeah. And yeah. then you won't be. Man, and then maybe you'll get to fuck some more girls with handcuffs <laughs> if you're good enough. And I can come watch through the window again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we've got time for one more. Oh, right, cool. Um, do you want to do the terrorist attack yeah, one? Yeah, why not? All right. I, th I thought I was going to die in a terrorist attack. This is good. This, I, I'm sure this will be a really light story. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> This happened about, hey Lewis, this happened about a month ago on a flight back from the UK. I had a transfer at Abu Dhabi. Great start. <laughs> um, so for the final connection back to Australia, it was all fine until halfway through the flight 
where I hear something in the section behind mine. I look up to see everyone doing the white lady looking to see what is going around thing, going on thing. I do my best to turn around in my seat and I find out that there was a bit of a fight going on. I'm calm at this point. There isn't really much that could happen here. So I hear, then I start to hear the shouting getting louder and the flight attendants were finally getting to them. At this point, I found out it was over a little bit of water being spilled, but the dude was still freaking the fuck out. Now, all I hear from behind the, behind, all I hear from behind me from the flight attendant was her yelling, calm down, Muhammad, you need to calm down, sir. That's when it got real. I'm generally pretty chill, but on hearing Muhammad, I tightened my seatbelt. Just thinking, as long as they keep him away from his phone, we'll be fine. Anyway, they got the guy off the plane first when we landed to a greeting party of the AFP, so that was entertaining. Have a shit one, Tom. Hey, Tom, your story sucked. <laughs> and look, that's just the normal flight with Tiger. So... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> okay, so a guy got pissed off because he got wet and you were just a little bit racist because his name was Muhammad. Yeah, so close to a terrorist attack. Bro, I've never been more disappointed by a fucking email. Yeah. And, and, and and what? It's hiding in the seatbelt. What, what's, what's that going to do? Oh, exactly. You yeah, know? like if Muhammad did bring the plane down, do you really think your seatbelt would have helped? Undo your seatbelt and take him out, you fucking pussy. <laughs> There's no if, if 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 my flight gets hijacked. There's no way I'm sitting down and taking it. I'm gonna stand up and fucking at least try and make the plane do a backflip before we go. You know, like fuck that, man. Uh, you know. <laughs> all right, uh, Doug. That's uh, on that low note. That's all we have time for. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for fucking it up. You know, we're having a great time. And was his name Tom? Is it Tom? Yeah, fucking Tom. Oh no, Tom's email was good. I oh, was it? I was that Tom before. Oh no, John's was good. Tom sucked. Who cares? Yeah, one good. of the first one was good. One with the handcuffs was awesome. Yeah, that was good. Um, thank you very much for joining me, Doug. Where can people um, find you? Uh, <coughs> uh, go to my YouTube, Doug Chapel. <laughs> yeah. Uh, or social media, Insta, uh, Facebook, Doug Chapel Junior. Just Jr. At the end. Yeah. Uh, the Comic Sands every Tuesday night. Yeah, if you get down there, might the catch Tuesday me show. as well every Absolutely. Tuesday. Lewis is there a lot as well. So that's yeah. awesome, yeah. You know, so yeah, and on the circuit, I've you know, I'm a, sweet. Yeah, you'll see him around, Peer, especially if you're in your Melbourne. bedroom window as well. Uh, sometimes, <laughs> no, that's just for us. Uh, Sniffing Tom handcuffs. Or that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks heaps, guys, uh, for thanks listening. Guys. I'll talk to you guys next Sunday. Have a shit one. That was great. <laughs>